Hey everyone, it's Sean. Welcome back to the channel. Well, I got uh, these three, looks like RIG or RIG 800 series headsets. And what I mean by three, there's two more in the bag down here, along with two more dongles like this one right here. I got plugged into the PC. And they've all kind of got the same issue, primarily dealing, it appears, with the, uh, the power switch here. Now, I've, I've put them all on the charger. I've charged them up, but when you switch it on, you see it just... Power on. Battery high. Headset connected. It's not always turning on. Battery high. This one's Headset leaking connected. now. That one's actually the better working of the three. Turn it off. Turn this one back up. Turn this one here on. Yeah. See, it doesn't even turn on. So you wiggle it, sometimes you can get it. There we go. Uh, it's like it's stuck in that sink position. You gotta take it down and then maybe it'll sink up. Let's see if it'll sink up. Yeah, it's sunk now. That switch definitely has an issue there. And how do I know it sunk up? Well, if I, if I go to my PC here, just go to uh, audio, should be able to select it. And then if the volume's up on this, I wonder if I can hear that tone when I press the speaker. You may not be able to hear that. But uh, the third one's exactly like this one, just a very finicky on off switch. So. I'm gonna get these out to the bench and take them apart, take a look at it, see if this is something that we can fix. As far as disassembly is concerned, it's rather straightforward. Uh, you just take off the ear muff, okay? You see this uh, this lip sitting here that just sits around the grooves down in there. That's easy to take off. Then uh, just four screws right over the top. You can see those two screw holes there in the top and then those two there in the bottom, okay? And then the uh, this outside clamshell piece kind of just comes right on off. All right, so in this in behind this light pipe, see this uh, clear plastic here. It's going to be LED underneath that, and this basically holds the entire switch assembly. Now I did notice, okay, uh, with the lid off of this one, Power on. that uh, that switch Headset it does return connected. to the center. Off is on. I mean, off is off, down is off, excuse me. When you turn it on, it should come all the way up, and then it's kind of sticking, Power but on. then return to the center. Battery when it high. needs to sink, Headset you flip it up to the top, and then it should come right back down again. But you see how slow it is to do that? Uh, this one right here performs a little bit better. I think this was the one that did better in the office. You see how it just comes right down? And wait a Power second, on. turns on. Okay. Battery high. That Headset should start the sync connected. process. Then back off. Uh, this one right here definitely doesn't return all the way down. Stays in that up position. You still got to bring it down Battery itself. High. So I'm thinking that this just might be, um, you know, a bit of goop or something. Um, dirt, debris that's gunked them up and maybe they needed just a little bit of lubricant. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this light pipe on this one and just kind of figure out my way around it and uh, see where we can lubricate, see if that uh, helps out with the performance on this uh, on off and you know, basically three positions, but one is spring loaded to, to where it returns back center, but three position switch. So let me get it apart a little more and, and just take a look around. Okay, so exposing the switch is not too difficult. You basically light pipe just comes right on out. You pull that out. You take this uh, wire sitting through here that's routed through this groove here you just move it out of the way and then there's one screw in the top right don't worry about this bottom screw that's part of the clamshell but this one screw in the top right you remove you can see it's sitting right there and then this is just a little plastic covering that comes right on out and uh, now we've got that on off switch exposed right there you can see it uh, let me zoom in just have it there you go right there exposed and now we can see how the switch actually actuates. So it's in the off position. We come up to the top, should return center. Power on. 
and yeah, we see it turns on if it headset's not synced you hold it up there i guess for a couple seconds and it returns back center so what i'm thinking is, is these switches are just dirty so what i'm going to do is um basically i'm going to clean them out with a little bit of cutie electronic cleaner and um spray it down to that switch and work it back and forth to see if uh that helps it uh free up and move a little bit easier and if it does we'll put it back together and we'll and then i'll try them out again hey okay, so i've sprayed them and worked them back and forth quite a bit this one in my lap being the the worst one here and uh see can i get this into a light that's good i might need to zoom in let me turn a light on there we go this one being the worst out of the bunch but right now it's in the off position let me switch it on you can see right there it's battery high headset not connected so zoom it's returning down as it should you know tapping it up it starts that sync mode battery high so it's possibly that there there's a little spring in there that uh that does that that spring could be worn out but uh cleaning them up has seemed to help benefit all of them quite a bit here i'll grab this one off my desk we can look at it too see it's returning down it will come on power on battery high headset not connected and i uh, really want to avoid taking the lid off and just pulling out the spring although i suppose i could do that um i'll give that some thought but all three of them are are working better now maybe i'll take the lid off and pull the spring a bit to you know you take an old spring and yeah now eventually it's going to get worn out again but if you take an old spring that's kind of compressed and you separate it it it's going to apply more force but over time it's going to weaken again uh, i'm very uh worrisome i have to, hate to put it that way but, but over losing one of those springs but suppose i could at least with this worst one take out that pcb and just see if i can expose the spring that's in it and uh you know elongate it a bit if that's the appropriate term or not but uh, i'll take a look at it and as uh, i suspected let me zoom in a bit here it is a hundred percent a spring that's on one side of uh, this switch. You know, you can see it right down in there. Let me get this in the middle of my lap so I can kind of go hands free. But uh, little spring down in here. And uh, on one side of the switch is a post, and so the spring is over the post, and then it's down there. But I'm willing to bet I don't even need to take this lid off. I bet I could stretch these out with these uh, pliers here while it's inside the switch. I just need to pull the coils apart. And you can definitely tell that it's gotten worn out because look, you know, when it sits over the post, that is all the way against it. But uh, look how much slack is in there now since this has gotten worn out. Might be hard for you to tell, but you know, that's several millimeters of slack from where the coils have just compressed over time from repeated use so i'm gonna try to stretch them out and uh work it a little bit more and then i'm gonna get this button back together and we'll see how they work afterwards i'm gonna stretch it out by putting my uh these uh little needle nose pliers i don't know what you call them but anyways in between the grooves and just use them to pry them apart kind of like this but uh yep that's my plan all right, so leaving it in and working on it uh, <laughs> with those uh, little small, whatever you call them. Anyways, didn't really work. I actually had to take the board out. Not incredibly hard to do. You get you got one uh, thumb wheel that you remove a screw, and then you have a little silver screw that goes into the board. I think it was like right there. You remove those two things and remove the, uh, the little turning wheels, and it just slides right on out. From there... Uh, you have to kind of pry up on this a little bit because you've got uh, that that 
this sits over top of here and you can see that there are posts on the bottom there's one side and there goes the other one posts go down into these two holes here through the board they're not soldered in or anything but you do need to lift it a bit and then um on the the both sides you have these little clips like uh like that one right there that just uh clip over the the edges and then you slowly lift everything up so you don't lose your screw i mean you, you don't lose your uh spring and there goes the other pieces there goes the, the actual plastic uh tactile switch sitting right there not non-tactile whatever but anyways you see the point in that's the post i was talking about and then you can just remove the uh the spring and then what i did is i just used my two fingers on each hand and just stretched it out a bit but now i'm gonna reassemble and see how it does and uh if it does well then that's what i'll do for the remaining two well unfortunately while i was Putting it back together after uh, pulling that spring to expand it, trying to get it back into the housing. I didn't have the spring fully secured and it pinged off. And in this shed, uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck. So what I did is I, I went online and I just ordered some replacement switches like the one you see there. And this part number however now, now you could go and you could probably get the correct one i ordered the incorrect one because unlike this one you see where you have the larger opening on the right side so the spring is loaded on the left this one's larger opening is on the left side and the spring is on the right so it's just the wrong orientation but it is the right SMD style switch. So I'm not going to do a full replacement, but what I'm going to do is cannibalize the spring out of these for these ones right here and just rebuild them with a brand new spring versus pulling them out. And even though I'll rebuild them with a new spring, I have to say, and I think it's worth stating, that I just don't believe that these switches are robust enough for the type of uh, physical abuse that an on-off switch would get on a device such as this. And it's kind of amazing to me that they, uh, you know, these, you can look up that part code, they're not too expensive, but that you would lose a headset that's not incredibly cost, costly, but you know, still is going to set you back quite a few dollars simply because of using a very cheap switch in the device. So if you're having problems with your rig 800 it is most likely because of this switch right here and that spring weakening over repeat use. So I'm going to get these things cannibalized and put in and uh, do the same thing for all three headsets and then we'll uh, test them out. This is a really quick aside. Here are the parts that uh, get put the back together. You have the this uh, little metal spring here. What sits over these metal pieces and makes contact as you slide it. You have the plastic switch and you have the spring, and all that has to be carefully set into here, and then the lid go back on top. So that's the rebuild portion of this other than rerouting these cables where they need to go we've got one pretty much back together you can see that it power on absolutely Battery comes high. back to the the center not connected. see if it'll go into pairing mode hold that up pairing yep all right turn it off But uh, anyways, yeah, let me get this one buttoned up and then two more headsets to go and we'll be done. Okay, got one put back together. Power on. Battery high. Headset not connected. Yep, still returning to center, so we'll call this one good and I'll get the other two buttoned up.
All right, all three headsets back together. And uh, we'll try out each one, make sure that they come on and power up. Spring came back to center. Power on. Battery high. Headset not connected. Does it go into pairing mode? Pairing. Sure does. Spring still comes back to center. Turn that one off. Let's go to this one. Spring came back to center. Power on. Battery high. Headset not connected. Pairing. There we go. Number two. And here's number three. Power on. Battery high. Headset not connected. I think I did that one wrong. Let's try it again. Power on. Battery high. Headset not connected. Okay. Pairing. There we go. Yeah, that's my bad. But anyways, that one's working as well. And so I'm going to do a little bit uh, more testing with them. Uh, plug them in my computer, sure all the dongles work. Sh still ensure that the mics work. And, uh, you know, play with the left and right channel. But uh, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this repair, uh, please let me know. By giving this video a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, anyways, uh, take care and goodbye. Bark.